Hi, I'm Jordan Green, product leader here at Outreach. Buyer sentiment analysis is a massive leap forward for sales leaders and their teams. Outreach is the only sales engagement platform using this new machine learning technology to measure playbooks and prospecting rep performance. Now, with real buyer feedback, you'll never again rely solely on engagement metrics like reply rates. Let's jump in. Let me show you how one of our beta customers, DeepD, uses the new sequence performance report to measure sequence and content performance. DeepD is on the sales ops team and owns sequence strategy and content management. Let's take a look at her report. For DeepD, understanding how sequences resonate with buyers is a crucial element of her job, especially with her top buyer persona, marketing leadership. We can quickly see at the top how they're performing with marketing leaders across all relevant sequences. She immediately sees trends in sequence performance with traditional engagement metrics like reply, open, and click rates, and sequence attribution to booked meetings. Now, let me show you how buyer sentiment analysis provides a whole new set of insights. She sees trends as well as buyer engagements classified into positive responses, objections, referrals, unsubscribes, and other responses. Let's take a look at the most used sequence. Personalized marketing leadership has the most prospect sequence during this time frame. The basic engagement metrics look strong. A reply rate of 29% is higher than the 19% average for this group of sequences. And an open rate of 31% is good. If open and reply rates were the sole metrics available to DeepD, she'd expect the sequence to drive a lot of booked meetings. However, because we attribute sequences to booked meetings, we can see this is actually not performing well. Relative to the volume of prospect sequence, this yield of booked meetings is very low. Compared to the sequence below, which has half the volume of prospects and twice the amount of booked meetings. Let's check if the right personas were engaged with this sequence. With machine learning, we make this quick and painless. We now analyze prospect titles and automatically classify them into buyer personas. So it's easy for DeepD to quickly confirm, yes, this sequence is primarily focused on marketing leadership. So we've ruled that out as a problem. This next analysis is the most important thing I'm gonna show you. After you see this, I think you'll agree, reply rates are simply not enough to measure sequence performance. As DeepD evaluates the sequence's sentiment, she can benchmark these rates against averages from the whole group. The objection rate of 47% is significantly higher than the group's average of 26%. As she analyzes the sequence, she finds step two is the biggest contributor to a high objection rate. It's an A-B test where she asked reps to personalize variant A with COVID era relevant messaging, and she pre-wrote variant B. If we only looked at reply rates, we'd see a similar volume of responses, and we'd likely continue the A-B test even though deeper engagement metrics showed the high-touch personalization isn't working. Because of buyer sentiment analysis, DeepD identified in this circumstance their reps didn't need to spend time personalizing. Let's immediately take action on this insight and remove variant A from step two. If reply rates were our only measure of performance, we would have doubled down on this sequence mistakenly. This is the power of buyer sentiment analysis. It's not only a more effective measure of performance, but it also provides the insights to immediately identify how to increase outcomes from this sequence. Next, I'll show you how buyer sentiment analysis helps managers measure rep performance. Let's look at how Veronica, who runs an SDR team, uses this next report. Veronica's team performance report helps track her team and reps against outcomes like meetings booked and leading indicators like touches per prospect and response time benchmarks. She uses it as her daily dashboard to keep a pulse on her team. It shows her team's progress towards booked meetings and a forecast of where her team will finish at the end of the month. Our machine learning uses her team's progress and rep activities to forecast where her team will land. She can also see how her reps need additional support and coaching. That's what makes this report so valuable. We see each rep's progress towards their monthly booked meetings goal the number of prospects sequenced, and the conversion rate of those prospects taking a meeting. These last two metrics are what we call leading indicators. 
Asking reps to do more is often not the answer. Remember, it's outcomes, not output, that matters. Our data science team has processed billions of sales interactions to know the top leading indicators that drive median conversion rates, touches per prospect, and response time. We know these are critical, so we've pulled them into the report so managers like Veronica can coach reps with in the moment specific actions to improve performance. Scott Sprout, who is ramping on Veronica's team, is far behind his peers and at risk of not hitting his first full month at quota. He's engaging around the same average number of prospects as his peers, but his meeting conversion rate is significantly below the average of 4.5%. Looking at his leading indicators, his five touches per prospect is below the average of eight, but his response time, which we benchmark against reps in his company and across all outreach customers, is fast. As we look across his leading indicators of success, we have one positive reinforcement and one coaching opportunity. His meeting conversion rate is low, so let's diagnose. Buyer sentiment analysis gives Veronica a guide to understanding buyer attitudes and opinions to an individual rep's approach, messaging, and personalization. It's an amazing diagnostic tool that's going to help her quickly understand where Scott is struggling and how to coach. Scott's positive rate is lower than his team's average of 49%. And wow, his objection and unsubscribe rates are high. This is a real problem. Every unsubscribe, we lose our chance to re-engage. This could be an indication of Scott targeting the wrong personas or using ineffective messaging. Let's check personas first. We can now see Scott is over-indexed on sales VPs and marketing ICs. Veronica's team focuses on marketing leadership and marketing ops. This is a common mistake with ramping reps. With these insights, Veronica has three strong coaching tips for Scott to adjust while there's still time to save his quota. First, keep following up quickly on replies. That behavior will drive more meetings for Scott. Second, increase the number of touches per prospect from five to eight by ensuring he's using the right sequences. And most importantly, focus on the right personas. Veronica raves about this report because it allows her to coach towards strong outcomes in the moment. Without the right insights, we often fall back onto encouraging more activities. But in our current selling environment, reaching out more simply won't work. Now, more than ever, our reps need to listen to buyers. With buyer sentiment analysis and these new machine learning capabilities, managers can now coach their entire team to perform like their best reps. No more guessing. You know right now what's working and what's not and can address it immediately. I've just walked you through how buyer sentiment analysis can dramatically help you understand how your reps engage buyers. It's no longer enough to know if and how often buyers respond, but how well they respond.